So, hi everyone, I am Leslie Anne Daniel, a third year PhD student at CEA List, working with Sébastien Bardin and Tamara Resk. Today I'm going to talk about our work on constant time verification at binary level using a technique called relational symbolic execution. For the context, in 1996, Paul Kocher introduced a new class of attacks called timing attacks. These attacks are based on the fact that an attacker can eat fair information on secret data by looking at the execution time of the program. It happens when the execution time depends on the secret. For instance, if a program executes in 3 seconds with an orange key and in 9 seconds with a blue key, then an attacker that monitors the execution time and gets 9 seconds can infer that the blue key was used. A solution to this kind of attacks is to use constant time programming. The idea is that the execution time should be independent from the secret. Ok, now the execution time is not really easy to define, but basically it depends on the control flow and the addresses of memory accesses because of the cache. So formally, a program is constant time if for all pairs of executions that only differ by their secret input, the control flow and the memory accesses are the same. And note that this property relates to executions, so it is what we call the two hyper safety property. The problem is that constant time programming is not really easy to implement, because you will need to remove any secret dependent control flow and memory accesses, and so a developer can make mistakes. Second, even if the developer writes constant time programs, the compiler can optimize away the protection and introduce violations in the executable. The conclusion is that it is not easy to write constant time programs and so we need automated verification tools to verify this property. There are two main challenges to build uh, constant time verification tools. First, constant time is a property relating to traces so standard verification tools for safety do not directly apply. And second, it is not necessarily preserved by compilers, and so we have to do our analysis at binary level, which is harder because we have to explicitly reason about the memory. Fortunately, for the first point, there is a recent adaptation of symbolic execution to pairs of traces called relational symbolic execution. It models two execution of a program and maximizes sharing between them. For the second point, we can use uh, symbolic execution tools for binary code with dedicated simplifications for binary analysis. Uh, unfortunately, when we try to implement a relational symbolic execution at binary level, it does not scale because the whole memory is duplicated and we can no longer share information between the two executions. Uh, this is why we designed new optimizations dedicated to relational symbolic execution at binary level. The key idea is to enable sharing between executions inside the memory. Second, we implemented these optimizations in a tool called BinSacrel for both bug finding and bounded verification of constant time. And finally, we used our tool to verify cryptographic implementations at binary level and we found new bugs introduced by compilers in codes verified at a higher level. Ok, so let me first introduce how relational symbolic execution works. Here we have a program that we want to analyze with a public input P, a secret input S and a load A instruction that leaks the value of A into the cache. So, in a relational symbolic execution, variables map to pair of symbolic expression if they may depend on secret and to simple expression if they do not depend on secret. For instance, the public input P is mapped to a simple expression, while the secret S maps to a pair SS prime. And because we analyze binary code, we also have a memory, mu, that initially contains secrets, so it is duplicated. Note that these relational expressions also allows us, allow us to track secret dependencies. In the end, 
uh, relational symbolic execution gives us a formula where only the expression that depend on secret are duplicated and the rest is shared between uh, both executions. The sharing is a bit similar as in uh, shadow symbolic execution for testing software patches with the difference that here it is used for relational verification. Finally, the question we want to answer is, can the variable A depend on the secret S? To do this, we send the, uh, the relational formula to the solver and ask, can A be different from A prime? If the formula is satisfiable, then A actually depends on the secret S and we have a vulnerability. Notice then A can also map to a simple expression and in that case, by definition, it does not depend on the secret and we can spare a call to the solver, which really improves performance. So here we have a great technique which enables sharing and tracks secrets to spare queries. Um, unfortunately, this sharing fails at binary level because the whole memory is uh, duplicated as it is represented as a pair of symbolic arrays. Because of this, all the loads operations are also duplicated. And first, we, cannot, uh, we can no longer share expressions between executions, but worse, we lose track of secret dependencies and cannot spare in security queries, and cannot spare queries to the solver. To mitigate this problem, we developed an optimization for binary level uh, relational symbolic execution. Our optimization builds on read over write, which is a simplification used for arrays and proposed as a preprocessing of the formula before sending it to the solver. Um, we use it on the fly inside the symbolic execution to keep relational expressions in the memory and simplify loads on the fly, avoiding to resort to the, dupl to the duplicated memory. To give an example, here we have an initial memory in which, we, in which we put a public value at index ESP-4 and a secret at index ESP-8. When we execute the instruction load ESP-4, we can directly return the simple value P instead of a pair of select expressions from the duplicated memory. This, of course, comes with simplification for efficiently checking syntactic disequality. This is our main optimization, but if you're interested, we also have two other optimizations to improve sharing and reduce queries in the paper. We implemented our technique in a tool called BinSecrel, which is available on GitHub, and evaluated it on cryptographic primitives. Here I'm just going to present a subset of our experiments. The first question is, is our tool effective on uh, real cryptographic codes? And second, how does it compare against standard relational symbolic execution? Okay, so first, uh, is it effective on crypto cryptographic codes? For this, we tested it on, for bounded verification on two uh, 296 secure programs and were able to verify all of them in 46 minutes. We also tested it for bug finding on 42 insecure programs and were able to find constant time violations in all of them in less than 40 minutes. This is the first automatic constant time analysis of these programs at binary level. So our tool can find even vulnerabilities in binary compiled from uh, constant time source code, but more interestingly, we found three bugs that slip through prior analysis, including uh, LLVM analysis, which shows the importance of reasoning at binary level. Okay, so now how does it compare against uh, r standard relational symbolic execution? We did the experiment on our set of cryptographic primitives and report that our optimization is 700 times faster than standard relational symbolic execution. Where relational symbolic execution takes almost 16 hours and get 13 timeouts, Binsakhel take, takes only one hour, uh, one and a half hour and has no time, timeouts. To conclude, we presented an optimization for relational symbolic execution at binary level 
which enables sharing between pairs of execution, including in the memory. We implemented our technique in a tool, which is open source on GitHub. We also verified cryptographic libraries at binary level and found new bugs introduced by compilers that were out of reach of LLVM verification tools. All of this was a long time ago, and since then, we extended, we extended BinSacrel to detect spectre attacks. We also worked on a framework to automatically verify the preservation of secret erasure by compilers. Finally, I would like to take advantage of this talk to say that I'm looking for a postdoc to work on software or hardware verification against microarchitectural attacks. Thanks for listening.